So the net asset value per share is a difference between a real estate company's assets and its liabilities, all taken at the current market values instead of accounting book values, and then divided by the number of shares outstanding. So in the formula, the net asset value per share is equals to the operating real estate value plus any land, cash and equivalents, accounts receivables, other assets minus total liabilities, and then we divide by the number of shares outstanding. Now, the net asset value per share is a superior measure of the net worth of a company compared with the book value per share. And it's often used as a fundamental benchmark for the value of a REIT or REOC. If there is a discount in the REIT's share price from the net asset value per share, we can interpret it as a potential undervaluation. And if there's a premium in the REIT share price to the net asset value per share, that could suggest potential overvaluation unless there were indications of positive future events like a successful property development completion or expected high value creation by the management team. Now, for the operating real estate value, we will usually look for results of existing appraisals if they are available. Now, if they are not available or if there is a disagreement with the assumptions or methodology of the appraisals, the analysts will often capitalize the rental streams which is represented by the net operating income that are produced by the REITs or the REOC's properties using a market required rate of return, which we call the cap rate. Now we we'll look at this example for an uh, equity REIT. Okay, we have the details for the last 12 months real estate NOI, the non-cash rents, the cap rate, the cash and equivalents, the land health for future development, accounts receivable, total debt, other liabilities, and shares outstanding. And the growth rate of NOI is assumed to be 2%. So we will attempt to compute the net asset value per share for this equity rate. Now, uh, take note that the NOI given here is for the last 12 months. This is historical. What we are going to do is we are going to calculate the pro forma cash net operating income for the next 12 months, which is we are looking for the NOI in year one okay for the coming year so when you have non-cash rents we have to remove it from the noi so we will minus okay we'll minus off so that will be 400 million and the growth for the next 12 months in noi is assumed to be two percent so two percent times 400 million that's eight million so that gives us uh, 408 million for the next 12 months so this is our estimation so to find the estimated value of the operating real estate, we will need to take the net operating income for the coming year, divide by the cap rate. So if you divide 408 million by 8%, that gives us $5.1 billion. And then we just need to compute the total assets. So we'll take the value of the operating real estate plus cash and equivalents plus land held for future development plus accounts receivable and that will be equals to $5.194 billion. And take note that here we exclude the intangible assets. Uh, we will subtract the total debt and other liabilities from the total assets. So that gives us $4.144 billion. And now we have the net asset value and divide that by the shares outstanding. So the net asset value per share will be $4.144. 144 billion dollars divide by 60 million shares so that will give us a net asset value per share of 69.07 and then we will compare this with the REITs share price to see whether is there a potential undervaluation or potential overvaluation